Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, we will talk about resonance structures and how to draw Lewis dot structures for those. So what exactly resonance means? A resonance is when we have a bond moving between the atoms. It typically takes place when we have a double bond and that moves between the elements. Okay, for example, in this carbonate ion, we have a double bond between carbon and oxygen. It may happen that double bond may switch to a different oxygen and we end up having a structure like this. It may switch to the third atom here and we may get structure 3. So, since the double bond is switching between three oxygen atoms so randomly and quickly, that we can probably write down this as a structure for resonating carbonate ion. When we show a single bond by solid line and the resonating bond by a dotted line. So let's actually draw a resonating structure for nitrate ion. Let's take the electron count first. We have one nitrogen and three oxygen. So that means we'll have five valence electron from nitrogen being from group 15 and we will have three times six 18 electrons with oxygen. The six electrons come because oxygen is in group number 16. When we add both of those we get 23 valence electron. But look at this there is a negative one charge that means it has one extra electron so we have 24 valence electrons available for nitrate ion. Now let's find out which atom will be central atom. There is one nitrogen and three oxygen so obviously N becomes central atom and we put all the remaining oxygen atom around it. Then we have one single pair of electrons between nitrogen and each oxygen. The next step is Nitrogen wants to make sure that every single element around it is happy and has a full octet. So there it is. We got three oxygens with full octets and that is 8 times 3, 24 electrons. We used up all the electrons. So what's the problem? The problem is around nitrogen here we only have 6 electrons. So although oxygen has complete octets, Nitrogen does not have a complete octet. For making it a complete octet, oxygen goes and shares a pair of electrons with nitrogen. So it looks like this. And we can actually represent this as a double bond between nitrogen and oxygen because we have two shared pairs. The other two oxygen will only have single bond and that is nitrate ion with negative one. Now remember, in resonance, the bond could shift to the other oxygen. So when that happens, we'll get double bond between these two. And again, that can shift to the third oxygen also. So the correct way to represent nitrate ion will be like this. The dotted line indicate that we have a resonance with a bond between nitrogen and oxygen. And the bond will be rotating around all these three oxygen atoms. So let's move on. Which of these examples have resonance structure? Remember there is one important thing to keep in mind is the double bond if it has to move somewhere else. That other element should be able to accept those extra electrons. So somebody is donating some atom there should be somebody to accept it. Here's our first compound. We have double bonds between carbon and oxygen. Let's see if you can move that double bond from this carbon oxygen to the other one. Is it possible? No, it won't be possible because if we do that, we'll end up having too many electrons around oxygen. So that is not going to happen. So this is not a resonance structure. Let's look at next one. We have a triple bond. Can we move that bond between carbon and hydrogen? No, that won't happen because for hydrogen, two electrons are sufficient. 
so it cannot take more electrons and more bond so that structure will not resonate how about this molecule there is a double bond between sulfur and oxygen is it possible for bond to move over here absolutely yes because oxygen can form double bond here too and then can we move that bond from here to here yes that's absolutely possible so that means this molecule will have resonance structures so this is the way the resonance structure will look let's look at the last compound here we have a double bond between sulfur and oxygen is it possible that bond can move between sulfur and hydrogen if that happens we'll end up having two bonds between sulfur and hydrogen hydrogen is always satisfied with two electrons which already is the case right now so if it moves two more electrons that will actually ruin the situation so this is not going to be possible and that's why we will not have resonance structure for that molecule now this makes drawing lewis dot structures for compounds containing polyatomic ions a little bit tricky so we have two examples let's begin with first one sodium sulfate so in this case we are going to have sodium ion and sulfate ion so i should be able to find out the lewis dot structure for each of those let's do the sodium ion here how do we write sodium ion that is in square bracket sodium symbol which is na and then the charge is positive one since it is group one and there is a charge of positive one the one electron present in the atom is gone so we have no electrons around sodium let's take the count for valence electron of sulfate ion and we have one sulfur and four oxygen so we get six electrons from sulfur and from each oxygen also we get six electrons so that is 24 plus 6 30 remember there is a negative 2 charge for sulfate that means we are going to add two electrons to 30 that gives you 32 electrons as valence electron so how do we write lewis dot structure for sulfate ion this is like covalent compounds we are going to put four oxygen around sulfur let's put two electrons between the central atom and every atom and then every single surrounding peripheral atom will have eight electrons so when we take the count it will be eight times four which is 32 and that's what we have so let's put the square bracket around that and write down the negative two charge one more thing to keep in mind we have positive one for sodium and we have negative two for sulfate ion the total net charge on both must be equal to zero which means we should have two sodium ions and that's what we have as the lewis dot structure for sodium sulfate now next one looks very tricky we have ammonium nitrate that means we have two polyatomic ions combining to form an ionic compound the first one is ammonium nh4 positive one we have one nitrogen and four hydrogen so each of the nitrogen can bring five electrons each of the hydrogen can bring one electron so total is five plus four nine but looking at positive charge we are going to subtract one that means it is eight electrons and for nitrate the charge is negative one we have one nitrogen and three oxygen that means it is one times five which is five and three times six which is eighteen eighteen plus five is twenty three and we have one electron there because of negative one charge so adding one that becomes twenty four now going back to the Lewis dot structure we are going to draw both the ions ammonium ion will have nitrogen in the middle and we will have all surrounding four hydrogen atoms then between each hydrogen atom there will be a shared pair of electrons and then positive charge and take again one more time count we have eight electrons here and we need to have eight so that's it we're done with ammonium 
Let's get the answer for nitrate negative 1. In this case, we will have nitrogen in the middle or central atom, three oxygen surrounding it. First, we are going to have two electrons between each and then every oxygen will have eight electrons around them. So, it's an octet and we will have negative one as the charge. If you look carefully, we have six electrons around nitrogen. So, what does it do? In order for nitrogen to get the octet, oxygen shares these two electrons with nitrogen. So, how does it look? There you go. We are going to have double bonds between nitrogen and oxygen. And double bond could be switching between nitrogen and each oxygen. And with that, we can actually write down a structure like this to indicate the resonance. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.